Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be video two, which is the accompanying video to the scanning with wireless uh, using Kismet uh, podcast that me and Mr. Betcher recorded a couple days ago. So what I've done is, as you can see on my screen, I have uh, my instance of Kali up in a VM in full screen, so that way you don't see my desktop. And I'm going to go through very rudimentary how-to on uh, doing a wireless audit. So I have my alpha, the one I talked about in the podcast, the AWS051NH. It will scan 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. You can find a link to Amazon where you can buy it, not directly from Amazon, but from another vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the VM. And when I connect it to the VM... You will see it say, would you like to connect? So I say yes to Linux. The minute I do that, it starts flashing. That means there is an interface for the wireless. So if I type ifconfig, oh, Chris Knapp, all right, ifconfig, you will see a WLAN zero. And I've blanked out all the MAC addresses to, to make sure everything stays nice and on the up and up. So once you do that, you need to create, um, you need to make sure that it is uh, ready for the wireless in your region. Different countries, Bolivia, um, Brazil, the European Union, Canada, US, they all use different parts of the wireless spectrum. Most all of them use channels 1 through 11 uh, for wireless uh, B and G and part of the N. But Japan, for instance, has all the way up to 14, 1 to 14. And for the 5 gigahertz, you know, anything between 4.7 to 6.0 can be used uh, with regard to wireless. And many countries take advantage of uh, the, those different bandwidths. So what you need to do is find out what your current uh, country setting is. And um, you can do that by going IW. Uh, reg get and you see that it's set for country zero zero that's the default uh, as you can see it only does certain ones but if you type IW reg set US oops IW reg set US then you go IW reg get you'll see that it will actually scan for different things so um, that's very important to do when you're doing a wireless audit because if you miss something, let's say you're looking for 5 gigahertz for US, you will miss, you know, a lot of the mid-range, looks like the 54 to 56, 54 to 5700 range on the uh, on the wireless. So if somebody was running an AP in that area, you'd totally miss it. So now that that's all set up and my wireless is set up to look at the country US, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, run Kismet. Really easy. Type Kismet. Now, if this is the first time you've ever run it, another box will pop up ahead of time that says, Hey, um, can you see the dark text on this? And if you can see the dark text according to what you've got your terminal set at, then you say yes. Otherwise, you have to change the terminal colors a little bit and say, uh, you know, and then restart it. But I've already started it before, so it's asking me if I want to start the Kismet server, which, yes, I do, because I want to be able to look at the output. Uh, startup options, I leave that alone. I say, uh, I turn off the show console, because automatically I'm going to close it anyway. Otherwise, you see the very bottom here where it says, could not load Kismet. You see a whole big uh, you know, terminal full of text that um, it's, it's not good. You're going to end up closing that out and going back in here anyway. So I click Start. This is an incurses text interface. Uh, what you're going to see here is it's going to set for a few minutes and it's going to say, oh, you didn't start it with any source, which is important because you need an interface to be able to capture the traffic. So you say, yes, I want to add a source right now. In this case, my interface is WLAN 0. Oops, WLAN 0. Forgive my typing. And you say add, and then it will say it's detected a bunch of new stuff. Boom, automatically everything starts popping up. Look, I got a bunch of stuff. So let me uh, let me talk about the interface a little bit. Uh, you have all your APs that are sitting up here. And these are this is a wireless printer in this case. This is uh, somebody else's network. 
this is somebody else's network. I won't tell you which ones are mine because you know I don't want you war driving past my house wherever I live and, and showing that. So um, so yeah, you get a number of different networks. You uh, saw the uh, clients that were running on the boxes. There's a Linksys one. Wow. There you go. There's a Linksys one running. And when you click on a, a Linksys, uh, we click on an AP, it'll show you the a APs that are connected to that specific one. Um, wow, that's pretty cool. So uh, once you've done that, you can also sort by type. You can also sort um, you know, based on WPA, WEP, WPA2, uh, or none. You can also view other things. Uh, if you are running a GPS uh, module alongside with this using GPSD, then you will get, uh, for war driving purposes, you will receive GPS coordinates in a little drop down box, a uh, little box right here that will kind of show you what's going on. It'll give you a telemetry kind of bit. Um, I never use the battery, so I don't know what it's for. Uh, I would assume if you're on a, a laptop or something, it will show you the battery in information. I'll enable it, but I don't see any any change in the in, in in the the interface. So you have your packets here. It shows you the packets going in and coming out, and the amount of packets being done across the network. Uh, this is an entirely passive system, of course. Uh, it's just kind of sniffing or smelling or hearing the air. It's just like you know, um, shows you the different uh, uh, BSS IDs in the area. Uh, let's see what else you can add additional sources if you have more than one wireless AP or more than one of these alphas you plug it in and you can also configure additional sources interface WLAN 1 for instance um, let's see uh, once you're done with that um, yeah, so on the on the side over here, it'll show you how long the ca the capture's been running, how many networks it's seen, how many packets have been transmitted or received so far. Um, it gives you an average packet per second, which currently says zero, but I'm also not, oh, there you go, 19. So 19 came in that second, um, and then no filtered, so I'm not filtering any packets. Uh, let's see. I feel pretty confident uh, that this is this is a great program. What I do when I have this running is then I walk around the building or I walk around uh, the area that I'm in uh, looking for the various information. So if I was to do this now and then do this in three months, let's say for a PCI audit, and I noticed that there were different APs in the area, I would go and investigate where those were located. Um, the Linksys one especially would kind of, you know, pique my interest because it currently said it didn't have any kind of uh, access on it. It says the encryption is open. You can click on that and it will show you the different kinds of things. It says it's negative 87 dB. That means it's pretty far away from my current location. If I moved outside, depending on the type of structure you're in, that will affect the signal strength as well. Um, more energy efficient homes with the newer kinds of insulation can also dampen the electromagnetic um, uh, signals going in and out of the house. Uh, so you uh, go outside, you'll probably find an increase in the number of dB on that. As I said, the lower the, the, the more negative the number, the worse it is. So let's go ahead and close this. Close the window. The in curses is a little, I don't want to call it clunky, but it doesn't always work in a VM as well as it should, I think. I do get some lag sometimes. So when you're stopping it, it'll ask you if you want to stop the Kismet server. Uh, you know, I usually kill it, but you can continue to have it run in the background if you want to. Um, I've never actually used it for that purpose, so I just automatically kill it. So there you go. When that happens, it shows you that it there have been a number of PCAP files and uh, text files created. If you had uh, been using a GPS module, it would have put the GPS coordinates in an XML format for you there. If there were any alerts uh, in the Kismet file, let me go ahead and go ls. Um, it'll do it by date time group. I did one earlier uh, this week uh, to kind of make sure that I was doing this right so the demo gods were kind to me. 
and uh, these are the files you're going to see, the, the 526 ones. Um, so you get a regular PCAP type dump file. So if I go more Kismet 26 PCAP, you'll see a regular binary file for that. Of course, you'll want to be putting that into your favorite Wireshark or whatever for decoding. Um, so let's see some of the other ones here. Uh, the GPS XML, I don't believe there's any data in the GPS XML file. Nope. Well, there is, there is, but there probably isn't anything in there. Uh, let's see. Kismet. Dang it. 26 GPS XML. Yeah, see, all you get is the, uh, the doc type and the XML. Uh, namespace and the type of encoding that's using for decoding the file. The big one you want to look at is what I call the net text file. Well, I don't call it that, that's what it says it is. Or Kismet 26 net text. All right, so what you'll see here is you see an, like different networks, um, you'll see the types of um, who manufacture it according to the, the, the SSID or the BSSID of the, uh, the system, how many packets, what frequency it runs on, in this case it runs on, uh, it says channel zero. Um, I find that when I'm doing audits, I only look for ones called, um, looking through the, the system here, see there you go, network two. There's the links, this one we saw earlier, with the BSSID. Um, showing infrastructure, that means it's an actual AP. Uh, the probes, I believe, are people who are looking for specific, uh, unassociated clients looking for specific APs. Um, you know, it can get pretty wieldy. This, this file is pretty large. Um, I usually dump it into a spreadsheet or something. It looks ugly as sin, but you can, you know, ferret out the necessary bits to. Uh, um, you know, collate for, for a report if you were needing to keep track of these things. I usually keep track of the, the MAC address, any kind of uh, channel information, and where I located it. That was an important thing too. So when I find one like the Linksys AP that, I, that was in my area here, I would go back and use um, use Aircrack or something like that to hone in on that specific AP and that BSSID and uh, try to locate it either through triangulation or if you know if it's if I know for a fact if I can go down to the first floor and it's much stronger on the first floor than it was on the third floor I don't do go through the whole rigmarole of doing the triangulation because um, you know. If our country, uh, country, if our office is, you know, far enough down, then I know that it's probably not on our network if the signal is stronger on the first floor or on the fifth floor than it is on the third floor. So let me see. Let me look at my fun, awesome spreadsheet I've got here of notes. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that, that was it. All right. So if you have any other questions, you can always uh, email us or put a, uh, check us out on Twitter. Uh, you can also go to kismetwireless.net. I believe they have a forum there. You can always ask for questions, uh, ask for help there or assistance if you need it. Uh, so that was, uh, that was video two. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tell your friends. Have a good day.